that brings me up as the big picture. So I don't know whether you want to do that, which means that when we, I send out the recording, it's, it's the big picture. And then as the same format that we're used to now, I will take you through the demonstration of what we're going to talk about today. And then um, 10 minutes before the end, I'll take you all off mute and then you can ask your questions. So let's get started. So I've got in front of you a rather depleted flower arrangement. So this is the arrangement that I did last week. I have done nothing to it, so it's still half an arrangement around the back. And there have been a few um, deaths along the way. So I had some of the golden privet this side, there were some bits here that have um, they died, and a couple of the asters as well. I think probably they were slightly lower down that have died. But what I have done, so during the course of the week, I have probably tipped the water out and refreshed it. And I've probably done that definitely twice, possibly three times. So the water never ever really went down inside the dish. But when I looked in the bit that didn't have any flowers in, it almost had this oily film across the top, which may well have been a reaction with the, um, the wire, I don't know, but it is galvanized wire, so it hasn't actually rusted. Um, so that, uh, to keep my flowers lasting as long as possible. So I would say, forget the fact of what the actual arrangement looks like, because there's flowers missing, but in terms of the actual health of the flowers, I think after a week that they're not doing too badly. So this half of the arrangement, if you remember, was where I had crushed the stems with the hammer, and I would say, I'm going to take these apart. So they, those are the, that's the, why that, this one here is definitely dead. It's, the stem has gone black and it's starting to dry. And it's quite hard getting these out because of the splaying of the stems. So we'll move to the other side. So that was just cut normally and that is dead. So at the moment we've got um, two alive, two dead. That was the sharp stem there. Again, you can see it's starting to go over. I would say with this totally non-scientific way of doing things that I cannot see a difference in the longevity of the flowers as to whether I crushed them with the hammer or um, gave them that clean cut with a knife. So you, you take your money and you pay your choice or whatever the saying is. You can see there that's the, the stem there that was crushed. So it doesn't seem to have made a difference. And part of me was thinking when I had this up over the weekend, I thought, oh, it's going to be really obvious because the crushed flowers are just going to die and my um, flowers cut with the sharp scissors are just going to be obviously alive. But I have seen no discernible difference between the two at all. So what conclusions do we draw from that? I think probably you do what you're comfortable with. I mean, when I hold them up like that, actually the ones that were hammered pains me to say it, but they do look slightly perkier than the ones that just um, were dealt with in the normal way. My inclination is, is to cut your flowers with a really, really sharp pair of scissors so you're not crushing the stems. So it was quite fun to do. I just feel, number one, you've got to get a hammer and then you use it and you've got to put it away again. And number two, it does seem rather brutal, doesn't it, to hammer the ends of your stems. And if you were going to be arranging in flower foam, this would be really, really difficult to put in your phone because you want the sharp, dark look of a stem to put in your phone. And it, it wasn't too bad in my chicken wire with the hammer ends, but you saw, you know, as I was trying, I still haven't taken this one out here, if it's stuck because the stem ends have splayed. So um, you decide what you want to do. Now, what I hear you saying happened with the other bunch of flowers. Do you remember I said, oh, I'm just going to do half the arrangement. I'll do something else with the rest of the flowers. Well, I shall move this out of the way and show you. That's what happened with the rest of the flowers. 100% total disaster. So do you remember I said I bought these on the Sunday and I put them in water and then we had class on the Tuesday. I came to look at these flowers thinking I'll do something with them on Wednesday. When I looked at them on Wednesday, every single one of the flowers, the heads had, had nodded over. So actually my flowers in the um, rose bowl arrangement lasted much better than the flowers that cut and plonk. And I don't know the reason why that is. 
apart from the fact the roses in the rose bowl were cut much shorter. So they do say that shorter flowers last longer because the water doesn't have so far to travel. And these were really long. In fact, they were slightly longer because I have, I have tried all sorts of things to poke them up again. So I did try, I put some of them into a boiling water and you can see that the stem ends are slightly different color. This one here, you can sort of see a tide mark on it just about there. And I put some down because I know that Nanette said, how about putting your flowers in a bath of water? And I tried that as well. And I would say both, both methods perked the flowers up. Um, but the following morning again, <laughs> I looked at them and they were all nodding over again. So this time I took a huge amount of, off the end of the stems. Normally I just sort of recut them a little bit. And I took a huge amount off the end and I gave all of them the boiling water treatment. And I wrapped them up in a piece of brown paper to support the nodding heads. You know, it's a bit like a dog when it goes to the vet. It had a collar around it. And again, they did perk up. And actually I would say that second emergency treatment perked the flowers up really well. But again, they, they haven't lasted at all. I mean, I just gave up on them. So they have, I probably had about two days where they looked like a half decent bunch of flowers. So sometimes I think it's just one of those random things. I bought these flowers in the supermarket. They were the first thing you saw as you go in, you went into the shop. So it's sort of in that, that, that breeze between the, the natural air temperature and the air conditioned environment in, in, the, in the shop. And that could well have been the problem as well. But I would say I have looked after these flowers. The ones in my rose bowl and these had the same careful treatment, but it just wasn't happening. So I think you just do the best you can. And sometimes life doesn't go your way, but don't they look a bit sad and horrible? So um, Joan says that she's tried that treatment as well with her hydrangeas. I think it's just about it's having the confidence, I think, to know what you can do and try and do it. And when it doesn't go wrong, not to let that put you off the next time. So sometimes, you know, imagine, I always say, if you were, you know, a young boy, um, you know, sweet 16, and buying the first bunch of flowers for his girlfriend, and they turned out like that, you wouldn't be, the girlfriend wouldn't be very impressed, he wouldn't be very impressed, and may look well put them off buying flowers for life. So, you know, sometimes things don't work out quite so well. So to, for today's project, over my shoulder here, I've got some flowers that I've pretended have come from my garden. And this is something that actually um, I adapted what we're going to do today because Jen mentioned this at the weekend when I was doing my Facebook Live on, on the Sunday morning. And she said that she has difficulty sometimes getting her own homegrown garden flowers to last as well as they can. So I thought we would do a little experiment today. And I am going to, I've, divide, I've got two, two vases there. I'll bring them onto the table in a minute. But I'm going to have one vase, one half of my arrangement again, just as I would normally do recut the stems and have them in water and I've got the other vase and you can see my kettle over my shoulder there where I've got some boil it's only just boiled some boiling hot water it's not actually because it's just gone off the boil and to have a go at searing the ends of the flowers and now I bought these flowers from my friend Anna who is a flower farmer and she swears by this technique that she sears all the flowers that she buys and again it's that shock treatment the poor old flowers you know it, it opens up the the vessels inside and encourages the uptake of water. And again, just to have a play to see whether it makes any difference and to see whether you can get your garden flowers to last a bit longer. But I just, I'm not gonna prejudge the outcome. As I said to Joan at the weekend, obviously the flowers that are grown commercially and you know, that you buy from the florist have all been you know, genetically engineered to be really long, really tall, really uniform in shape and long lasting. And they've sometimes lost their scent in that process. Whereas the flowers, you know, the sort of country star flowers are grown because they are interesting and they're visually appealing and they're still being naturally pollinated by the bees and they have a scent. So it's that balance between the two, whether you want to have the perfectly uniform flowers that are, you know, guaranteed, money back guarantee, as many of the supermarkets, all the supermarkets do. And then your flowers that you've picked from the garden or got from your flower farmer. So it is, it is all a bit of trial and error. So I'm going to lean across now and get my flowers. So first of all, I've got a heat proof jug and I have just boiled. You may even, I don't know, you can, yeah, look, I can see steam coming off. So you can see that in your picture. So the boiling water, I'm going to put that away. 
and my two bunches of flowers. So I put this as a bucket and I've just separated them out. Now I've bought these and even when you buy flowers, it can be a tad disappointing. You see these ones here, the Rebecca, those are the ones the, from the flower farmer and they haven't lasted overnight. So what I've done here is I've got um, some Rebecca out of our garden, so I've split it up that way. So what I am going to do is I'm going to, these flowers, they've all just had their, their stem ends recut and put in water. So I'm going to do the treatment whereby I recut the stems, plunge them into water and then put them into my flower arrangement. So off on the side here, it's getting all very busy here this morning, then to have to lean forwards. Oh. But I've got a little basket here, so I thought we would do a basket arrangement. So this actually is, um, I sometimes use this as my uh, flower arranging tool bag. It's a crocheted basket made with t-shirt yarn. And um, so I can sort of carry around, instead of carrying around a huge suitcase full of things. And I've got a tub here and over the top of it, can you see I've put the lattice work of tape over the top. So I've used my pot tape to do that. I've got a thin and an arrow there and just pulled it across in a lattice effect and then disguised the container with the basket and because it's gaping a little bit I've cut an extra bit of yarn and I was going to tie the handles together so it just gave it a little bit more of an upright structure so I shall tie that in there so one half of the basket arrangement is going to be my flowers au naturel just recut the stems and put in normal tepid room temperature water. And the other side of the vase, I'm going to give my flowers the shock treatment. Now these Rebecca will never recover. You can't bring anything back from the dead. So we will see how this goes. Now, in addition to the shock treatment, I'm also going to cut these flowers underwater. So I don't know whether you've ever heard about that because I normally hold my flower stems up and I will tell you, know, while I'm talking about this, this bit of water at the end will drop off and it will, you know, you can imagine over time, I'll be sitting here for 10 minutes telling you about how to cut your end of your flowers. I'd recut the stems, talk for a few more minutes, and then it's almost like the recutting of the stems has been pointless because it starts to dry out. So you will find some florists, or some advice you'll find online is that you should cut your flower stems underwater in order that you don't then get the plug of air going up your stem. And again, I'm not entirely convinced that it's worth doing because I think the faff of cutting your flowers underwater in terms of cost, energy and effect isn't worth doing. And I think obviously when you arrange your flowers, you're not going to be chatting 10 to the dozen as you do it. And I think if you do it reasonably, you know, quickly in the normal sense of the way, I don't think uh, of, you know, all the years I've been treating my flowers like that, that, that it makes a difference. But I thought I would just show you and then it's something for you to, to, to think about. And the other thing as well, must say, is you, if you are cutting flowers from the garden, you need to think about what time of day you cut. So the ideal advice is you go out in, in the morning, you know, when the grass is still wet from the dew, or you go out in the cool of the morning. You shouldn't be cutting your flowers during the day because you're putting them under, under pressure. They're, they're, they're hot and they're dry. And you're going to, you know, just for any flower, it would be a problem being cut during the middle of the day. And if you want to be extra, extra, super careful, you would go out with your scissors, you know, half past six in the morning where, where everything was still damp and you'd have a bucket with you. So you would cut into the bucket, cut into the bucket. Whereas perhaps normally what you might do is we might go around the garden cutting flowers and just have them in our arms and then put them in, you know, in a bucket when we get them back to the kitchen. So if you want to sort of be belt and braces, pick in the cool of the morning, have a bucket with you just to, as your receptacle and then take them back indoors and start your conditioning, your preparation treatment. So here it goes. So I'm not going to use any greenery here. I may well put greenery in afterwards, depending how we go. But what I have done is I have split my bunch exactly 50-50 and then I'm going to start off with my biggest flower first, which is the dahlia. Now dahlias are renowned for making your water slightly murky and I don't know what it is, some flowers just seem to do that. My asters were definitely doing that. They were going all sappy and dirty and sending the water, you know, a very, very unpleasant colour. So you were still, what I've done now is because you can't see my water, I need to make sure I'm checking the water and tipping away every few days and replenishing. And all I was doing was tipping my water out and just sort of squirting water in, hoping that was going to dislodge any, any grit and greenery that was in there and give me a fresh cut. 
So I will move that slight notification that I'm doing. So jug of hot water. So the advice is that you recut under the water. So can you see what I'm doing here? I'll bring it a bit further. I'm putting the stem in the water and I'm cutting it underwater. I think you're going to have to imagine that. And then when you cut it, I did see a couple of air bubbles rise. So that is the air pushing out. And then you could hold your flower here for the count of 10, or it may be that you want to actually have all your flowers. Sometimes I do this as well. I, I recut all the stems, but I leave them just to sit in the water until the water's gone cold. Because I think once you've done that shock treatment, it's a bit of you know, anything cooler than a shock isn't really going to affect the flowers, but you do end up slightly cooking the flowers. And you can tell whether someone's done this treatment because the bottom few centimeters is always that darker khaki brown compared to the, um, the freshness of the green of the rest of the stem. And then you take that, and as I take it out, in theory, the, the, the water is, so I can see it dripping off, is there dripping, and that should make it seal a bit more. So I just, if I'm perfectly honest, I find that just too much for faff to do. So I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes for you. So snapdragons, I'm going to take off, I might, I've got two stems there, so I might first of all cut it off there. I need to take off the bits of green that are going to be in my basket. And then put it into the water, recut the stem under the water. And again, I can just see a tiny, it's almost like when you put a dissolvable, um, you know, a, um, soluble aspirin or something into a, into a bucket, into a glass of water. It's not effervescing, but there is definitely a little, you know, just a few bubbles that are coming up and then put that into here. And what you can see me doing, of course, is I'm taking potluck with the length of my flower. So I'm going to go ultra casual. I'm not doing, I guess I should do it really, is to think about where my flower is going, measure up and then recut. What I'm doing is just vaguely a cut and plonk. So into the water, recut the stems. I didn't see any bubbles this time. It's not, it's not a, you know, you don't have to see the bubbles, but it's just recutting the stems and then placing them into your container off the side like that. And then coming through the dahlias. Now I have decided, I know dahlias are really, really fashionable. I've decided I don't like dahlias because they turn the water really murky. And also I find them quite difficult to arrange because at the moment that flower head is straight up with a pom-pom on the top. But as they mature, they bend over and you can only arrange them in one way. So if they're little soldiers, so I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of dahlias. Sorry to say I'll be drummed out of flower school for that. So the same thing here, under the water, recut the stems, then put it into the vase. So you don't have to hold them there forever. This one here, I might go a tiny bit shorter. Um, I'm gonna to cut to length and then recut. So just holding it there. And of course, making sure you don't burn yourself as well. They do smell quite nice though, fresh flowers. My sisters are all over at the weekend and um, they came into my workshop and they all said, oh, doesn't it smell lovely in here? But bearing in mind, I have nothing in my workshop apart from some dead flowers. I think my sense of smell has gone over the years. So I don't really sense it. So, and then zinnias. Now I will say, if I don't like dahlias, I do love a zinnia. They come in all um, colors from, um, they go from lime green to, to pinks, to yellows, to quite deep fuchsia pinks, and then quite darks as well. So they are rather lovely. So I've got three of these, and I'm going to pick the one that looks smallest to my smallest, and then just adjust the size. So I've got, tall, middle, shorter. I'm going to trim them all to length and then I'm going to cut them under water and shock them that way. So normally if I was doing this in the garden, of course I'm doing conditioning and arranging all of one. So I would go around the garden, cut my flowers, immediately put them into buckets as I cut, then I'd get them indoors, I'd boil the kettle and then I would take them out of the bucket I'm pretty much production line, cut the stems, put them in the boiling water, put them back in the bucket to rest and relax. Then I'd go off and do something else. And then when I'd have a good time to have a drink, I would then start arranging them. But if you're arranging direct in water, it's not so important that you leave them to rest because of course they're resting in your vase. But if you were arranging them in flower foam, it is important. They do say to leave them about a couple of hours because the flowers don't take up water in the same way in flower foam as they do in a vase of pure plain water. So I shall put those flowers in there. Now you can't see that one. Slide that down there. 
Oops. You can see a little bit of a gap there. Making sure, of course, that your flowers are in water. So you'll be taking care of your, my basket is bigger than the opening of my little vase. So consequently, I need to make sure that I'm actually hitting them, and it sounds obvious, but make sure your flowers are actually in the stems. Now these ones, I was going to throw them straight away, away straight away, because they've just gone really shabby. They, they looked a bit odd when I got them. I wasn't entirely convinced that they were top notch, but they've just started to go over. So I could just throw them away, but I could rescue them and I could pick the petals off. You know, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me not. It's a bit like gerberas as well. If you ever get a gerbera and you've got petals missing or sunflowers, so I can salvage something. The stem itself is quite healthy. It just looks like the flowers have been a bit bashed. So that gives me a little dark dot, which, you know, just, you know, I've paid for a flower. I might as well go ahead and use it. And again, it's having the confidence to do things like that. Just adapt and change what you have got. So into the water, recut the stem. Oh, there are bubbles coming off this. It's just a, the fine, I think you need to put your glasses on really, but it's just a fine trail of bubbles going off and put that into the vase there. And you could do the same thing. So I will, you don't want to see me picking the leaves off. I've got bubbles here as well. It's very satisfying watching those bubbles coming up. And I will, I will do the zhuzhing and the shushing when we're off camera and then take a picture. But it just goes to show when I bought these flowers, I've often talked about this, is my mild, just an aching tiny bit of disappointment. When I saw them all in the bucket, and of course you buy them in a bucket and they're all hidden in the bucket and you think, gosh, I've paid that money. And there, there isn't anything in there. And it's only when you come to unwrap them that you actually think, oh, actually you see them for their individual beauty. And that is why, it's, why I've chosen not to put green, I don't think I need greenery, is sometimes it's nice to be able to have the abundance of a bunch of flowers that when they are in season and they are more affordable, that you can just go for it. And I think if you can, you know, some a little bit of a treat. I haven't had to use any greenery to fill out. Um, it's not quite going. I can see a gap just there. That um, you can just have a whole basket, and it just really does look as if you know it's just been arranged from Granddad's garden. Now I know that I can see a very big gap there, but I'll come back to that later so you can see what I'm going to do. On this other side so you do see every single flower for, for the beauty that is and I'm still thinking about my principles of flower arranging I've got my biggest showiest flower in the middle and then you can see this that's become the bud which actually the seed head the smaller bits for the outside that's that's um, going to bother me a darker flower perhaps I just need to cut it down a bit shorter but you've got some high and some low and then here I I can't quite go up. Is it out to the bud as a flower? I can see it in the camera, but I don't know whether it was. And again, a bud there, which from the side gives you quite a bit of depth to the arrangement. So it's not just flat. You've got from this bit here that's the front, and then you stand back, stand back and you can sort of see all these lines going across and back through the arrangements. So that's what you're aiming for is a depth of interest. So shall we do the other half and see how that fares? Now, every single one of these flowers I have already conditioned. So the traditional way you can do it either stem by stem, or you could just go straight through and you know bunch in your hand and recut the stems and then put them back in your water. So it's entirely up to you whether you, you do it slowly and carefully or whether you do it in a production line, pick them up, cut them across. It doesn't have to take long, but I think it just does depend on um, and what you're doing. Faff. <laughs> yes, so I think it's a faff as well. It's just too time consuming. So Joan says that she recuts her stems and then puts them in boiling water. No, that's not, not wrong at all. It's the combination of, I would do that, Joan. I would recut my stems and then put them in boiling water and then put them back in, my, in the water container. The reason why I'm cutting underwater is just to show you, demonstrate to you, that there is a, a, a channel of thought that says you need to cut your stems underwater in order that you don't get an airlock in the stem. So I'm kind of sort of demonstrating two principles in one, so being totally unscientific. So it's the principle of plunging your stems in the hot, the boiling or just boiled water um, as a way of shocking open the vessels to take up water. But also, you know, to consider, I've got flower petals on me now, um, whether cutting underwater would be something you'd be interested in doing. But I think it's a faff because 
I think to, to ideally do it, you'd need to lay out your flowers in a washing up bowl almost so you can get to them. Now, it's very hard getting into the, the cut under water when they're already in a confined space in the job. So I agree with Sue. I think it's all a bit of a faff, really. But, you know, let's discuss it and see, um, you know, what works and what doesn't work. Um, and Joan's saying it's very nice without the, without the foliage. Yeah, so I've decided that I didn't want to, part of the reason I didn't want to put the foliages in is because everything I've got here is a real, it's, it's like a, a buffet of flowers, a smorgasbord of flowers. There's something of everything. And I thought if I put the greenery in, it's sort of, as you know, I'm a huge believer of putting greenery in first, but it's because I've got quite a small vase I'm putting them in. I've got, you know, a, not, not the overly generous, but a generous quantity of flowers. And the fact is they're all the sort of high season, seasonal flowers from the you know, typical British garden. And I just wanted to showcase them off without it all looking very um, subdued against the greenery. So I wanted you to be able to see you know, the, the pom-pom shape of the dahlia and the spike form of the, um, the snapdragon to show them off and not to have them too diffused. So with everything I do, I keep you on your toes because I sort of tell you there's a rule and then I go ahead next week and break the rule. But the rule is there should be no rules. You do what makes you happy. And as long as your flowers are lasting as long as you think they should. I mean, if these all died tomorrow, I'd be pretty upset. But if they last, you know, especially for garden, grown flowers you know if they last five days i think i'd be reasonably impressed seven days i think i'd be very impressed ten days that, well, that's just not going to happen at ten days with with the dahlias because i don't think they're a particularly long lasting flower so um mary says i would rather cut them and then give them a good drink well yes i'm with you here as well mary i think this is just a bit of a fact <laughs> so you'll see that as i make up the other end of the arrangement will be much faster because I've done that job already. We've well, just seen me recut the stems all in one go. I've put them in the water and they either can rest in your bucket of water off to the side or because we're arranging direct into water. Actually they're doing, they're resting and looking beautiful at the same time. So I would say you only need to set them aside to rest in the bucket if you're thinking of putting them into flower foam. Because although flower foam has, is the water source, um, they don't take up water as efficiently, and you'll know that if you've ever used flower foam, is when you take your flower arrangement apart, you'll see that the foam has been stuffed up the bottom of the stem and it's sort of formed a little plug. So you can just imagine that the water doesn't get up um, straight away. So um, that is giving me the thumbs up. So thank you. I hope your hair is looking beautiful, Simon. So again, the other side, um, I've chosen this as my center flower. So it's not a match, but it is still. Um, bright and beautiful and I'm probably going to have to get rid of these um, side shoots here because I'm, they're not going to fit through my tape so I'm going to take that opportunity to trim off the excess recut the stem just the size this time so I want it sort of going like that and coming through on the edge there so it nestles together so I've got this dahlia in front this one a little bit behind so that is our recession now ladies it's telling me we've got 10 minutes left so do you want to take yourselves off mute and um i will continue arranging while you do that and then we will come back and have a face-to-face -face chat about what we've been doing and then i will just fill it out just so we start to look like we have got a full arrangement off to the side so i do need to have some fine elements here i've got my bigger dahlias in and you can see there where you have got big stuff that you do need these lighter and brighter elements to hover above a little bit so you can see more of the of the flowers and it makes it much larger um, and more elegant looking i think i'm probably going to leave it at that for now i might have a bit of a zhuzh later but you get the principles you don't need to watch me doing that but the point of this exercise was in theory, will this half of the arrangement last longer because I have seared and cut my stems underwater? Or will I sear, you know, so in theory, we might think this half will last better and this half will um, possibly die off sooner because I just gave it the ordinary treatment of the straight across cut in the air and then put it back into the water. So let's see whether we can um, have a little bit of a chat before we go.